So this is a pretty straightforward review so far. If you can do something that produces more hydroniums, that makes the solution more acidic and it lowers the pH. And if you can do something that produces more hydroxides, that makes the solution more basic and it increases the pH. Now this is just in water that was not buffered. And what we have to review now is, why does a buffer prevent this from happening? How does a buffer prevent this from happening? How does a buffer prevent the pH from changing? So let's think, as suppose we were using um, our acetic acid buffer here. So we're going to use a solution of acetic acid acetate and water. Basically, when you're working with acids and bases, you always use water as the solution. When we're working with acids and bases, we, uh, we always uh, we always use water as the solvent, so we should assume that we're always using water as a solvent here. Now, remember that this is acetate, which is the conjugate base of the acetic acid. Mm -hmm. um, now, I haven't shown the spectator ion. You could show that or not, depending on what you want. If I had shown the spectator ion, maybe I could have called this potassium acetate or sodium acetate, and then we would call this the conjugate salt. But it doesn't matter whether we call it the conjugate salt or the conjugate base, it's the conjugate of the acetic acid. That's the key. All right, so this should be a buffer because it's a weak acid and it's weak conjugate. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see how this is going to uh, affect things. So now let's suppose that we add sulfuric acid to this solution. So I'm going to add sulfuric acid to this solution. This is something we saw in the previous session, but it was actually a, a few sessions back by now. So uh, we might have forgotten. What happens when we add acetic acid to this solution? So let's see if you can write what's going to be the chemical equation for what happens when we add acetic acid to this solution. We have acetic acid. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I misspoke. I should have said we're adding sulfuric acid to the solution. I, I, th I think you understood what I meant. So I, what I meant is, I want to um, write down what's going to happen when we add this sulfuric acid to this buffer solution. I, I think you understood what I meant. Okay, so um, what reaction is going to occur? That's good. Okay, so we have to ask, what is the other reagent that the sulfuric acid is going to react with? Who will the sulfuric acid react with? Well, we've talked about this in the past. If there's nobody else to react with, it would react with the water. But it would really prefer to react with a, uh, a better base. If there's a, if there's a better base around, it would prefer to react with that. Well, here, here we have a base for the sulfuric acid to react with. Uh, I think your first guess is that the sulfuric acid would react with the acetic acid. But then you caught yourself and saw that doesn't make sense. An acid doesn't want to react with another acid. It wants to react with the base. So the sulfuric acid the sulfuric acid is going to react with the acetate here. That's the base. And then you wrote the correct products. What does sulfuric acid do? It protonates things. So it's going to protonate this. And then what's left after the sulfuric acid protonates? Well, it's the same thing, but it's lost a proton. And it was good that you got the charges right. After this protonates, it'll be neutral. And after this deprotonates, it'll be negative. OK, so uh, that's exactly what you wrote. That's good. By the way, will this reaction go to completion or to equilibrium? Completion. How do we know this reaction goes to completion? Because we have 
because one of the starting materials is a strong acid. That's something we've talked about quite a bit in the past, and we're just reviewing that earlier today. If any of the starting materials is a strong acid or a strong base, the reaction goes to completion. It doesn't matter that this is weak. If any starting material is strong, the reaction goes to completion. We were already using that idea here. We made both of these reactions go to completion too, because this is a strong acid and a strong base. All right, now the key thing to notice is, based on what I have written on the board, what was the result of adding this sulfuric acid to the pH? Based on what I have on the board, has the pH gone up, gone down, or stayed the same? Yeah. Take your time and think about that a little bit more. Um, what's happened to the hydronium concentration based on this equation? Based on that equation, has the hydronium concentration gone up, gone down, or oh, stayed, it's, it's stayed the same? Stayed the same, because we haven't produced any hydronium. Yeah. Compare that to this down here. In this case, you can clearly see the sulfuric acid was producing hydronium, which would directly lower the pH. But here, it doesn't look like there is any hydronium being produced, so we would say that the pH stays constant. Now, this is actually just an approximation. There are some subtleties that we're not taking into account here. The pH will go down, but it won't go down by very much. Uh, but we can see here the pH here is approximately constant. It would be better to say that actually the pH will go down, but only by a little bit. We won't go into those subtleties. But we can certainly see here that we wouldn't expect the pH to go down by as much as it did when we just added sulfuric acid to pure water. And now we're seeing how a buffer prevents changes in pH. Now we're seeing how a buffer prevents changes in pH. Remember, this is the non-buffered solution. What happens when you add acid to a non-buffered solution? Well, it has no, the acid has nothing to do but protonate the hydroniums. I'm sorry, but protonate the water, which gives you hydroniums, which lowers the pH. But what happens when you add an acid to a buffered solution? Well, when you add the acid to the buffered solution, instead of producing hydroniums, the acid just gets soaked up by, this, by your weak conjugate base over here. You can think of this as like a sponge. This is like a sponge that's soaking up the hydroniums that you would otherwise produce. This is like a sponge that's soaking up the hydrogens, the protons, that would normally get released over here. If this buffer didn't exist, then the hydroniums would be getting produced by protonating water. But because we have this sponge in the buffer, it soaks up the, um, the, the protons. And if you just look at this equation, it would look like we're not producing any new protons at all. Actually, in real life, we'll produce some, but not very many. The pH is going to go down, but only by a little bit. The pH will stay approximately constant here. Um, do you see the difference between these two cases? Do you see how the buffer here prevents the change in pH, but the non-buffered solution of water allows the change in pH? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I understand the, the one the reaction mm -hmm. of sulfuric acid with water and how the pH goes down, but the other one, um, so the, the pH remains constant. Right. So that is, that's still the reaction uh, yeah, now this reaction does go to completion here. That's why I'm not drawing an equilibrium arrow. This reaction is going to completion. But is this reaction producing any hydronium? No. No. So even though it goes to completion, it's not producing any hydronium, and therefore we would not expect the pH to change. Remember, what does the pH measure? pH is just shorthand for the negative log of the hydronium concentration. The only way to change the pH is to actually produce hydronium or remove hydronium. The only way to actually change the pH is to produce or remove hydronium, but this reaction is not producing any hydronium, so we would not expect it to change the pH. You know, so would you call it like a buffer solution then? Is that a buffer? Oh yeah, that, that's the point I'm trying to make. That we're trying to explain here how a buffer works. Okay. Right? But earlier we were talking about how the buffer is a weak um, acid and, weak, and it's weak conjugate base. Right, and that's what we have here, don't we? We have a weak acid and it's weak conjugate. Maybe you're getting confused because we're adding the sulfuric acid, which is strong. But the point is, this is a buffer okay, solution yeah. right here. We have a buffer solution. We have a buffer solution of these two things, acetic acid and acetate. Those are both weak. And then it's perfectly fine to add a strong acid to the buffer. So we're adding this strong acid, sulfuric acid, to the buffer, but the sulfuric acid isn't what makes it a buffer. What makes it a buffer is the weak acid and its weak conjugate. Well, that's here. the idea, then. Right. That you could add something and then the pH right. remains constant. Okay, right. that makes sense. 
Yeah, yeah. So I should clarify that when you originally make the buffer, the way you make the buffer is by putting a weak acid and its weak conjugate in water. Uh, and that's what makes it into a buffer. But then it's perfectly fine to, to then go in. At, so I, I emphasize you can't make a buffer out of a strong acid or a strong base. You don't make a buffer out of a strong acid or a strong base. But you can certainly start with a buffer and then add a strong acid or a strong base to it. Now, this is not the thing that's making it a buffer. This is not the thing that's making it a buffer. This is the thing that's getting buffered, so to speak. Right. This is the thing that we need to prevent from changing the pH. 